firewood. Ah, another lovely day in the neighborhood. Uh, mostly, except that. Look. Oh. Anyway. Um, okay. Um, yeah, some more of this value stuff, I suppose, right? Because it's only, you know, it's only critically important to any notion of reality and values. And Hothliday just kind of points that out, Vicki Mackey, by agreeing with him, that um, they understand that if this thing was real, this idea of something feeling mattering, that it would create these obligations to do something, that you couldn't make the bigoted distinction between the welfare of this walking around organism and the welfare of any other walking around organism. You can't compromise one to feed the other. And they don't want that obligation. And that's what this is really all about, is a defense of selfishness. Um, but anyway, so half a day keeps using these, this, obviously this language to them as if it somehow is explanatory, as it says something. Uh, I've pointed out that in the example, the idea of saying there's a child and somehow the child changes if I say, there's my child. Is the child different? Is its needs different? Is its reality in any way different? No. It makes no difference how it got here, who claims possession. It exists, and that's much like our feelings. They're children produced by us. They're things produced by us. And possession has nothing to do with it personal possession of a feeling does not mean anything. It doesn't add or subtract value from the thing itself. It is in and of itself has properties. Children in and of themselves have properties. And um, clearly these people, I mean the only logical conclusion is they want to make distinctions. The white ones are more important than the black ones. <laughs> Clearly. Why else would you be a value relativist? Oh, stinging hornet little bees. Ooh, I don't know. I have to move my path. Those are the little bees that stung me before. They really like those uh, trees. Yeah, I'm going to have to find a new plan. Hmm. Anyway. Nasty little fuckers. Uh, some import. I'll have to look them up. I know what the fuck these old dirt fucking hornets. Uh, anyway, tiny little fucking things. But boy, can they sting. Anyway, um, oh, uh, so this idea that we can, you know, transfer or, or demote something by merely saying to them. I say, suffering sucks. He adds, to him, right? So, so the statement is a truth, suffering sucks. But to him, to Hothliday, no, it doesn't suck. It only sucks to him or to me, but it doesn't suck as a fact. <clears throat> so the qualifier only exists for the purpose of saying somehow the suckness isn't real. It's somehow a them or you thing, and it's not a real thing. So children aren't real things. They're just either yours or mine, but they're not a real thing. That's the argument. I know, it sounds incredible, but that's what they're saying. Um, I'm trying to think of the other point he was making. So anyway, well, I'll just get to some of the other ones. It makes this faith argument that it's some kind of not logical deduction for me to say, I feel, somebody else feels, same difference, that's faith, that's religion. I've now invented God because I recognize I'm just a dishwasher. I'm just a human being, an average, functioning, sentient mammal. That's it. So I've done that, now that's a religion. That's a matter of faith, it's not a fact that these are all similar. So he says somehow we can't test it. I saw, I think we can test it. We can hit them all with a hammer on the knee and then we can all shove a telephone pole up their ass. 
Um, but he would say when they reacted and ran away from the experiment that they're not running away because the pain is bad. They're running away because the signal is run away. That's it. It's not because there's a bad thing happening. They just have some signal that says, would you please get up and run away for no good reason. No, no, it's, there's no, yes, it's pain and it's horrible, but that's not why you're running away. You're running away because it's just a run away thing. This is a run away thing, this is a run to thing, and has nothing to do with any kind of feeling thing. That we're not paying any attention to that. You're not doing it to avoid the horrible or the torture. No, you're doing it because that's what your brain says, run away. Again, sorry, without the horrible pain and torture, I wouldn't run away. I think that's a testable fact. Let's take the pain and torture out of something, and let's take the reward out of something, and see if people move towards it or move away from it. <laughs> I don't think they will. Another testable theory. Yeah, very testable. Um, yeah, that's all you can do. I mean, these people talk so arrogantly, and they, I'm somehow not getting, I'm not getting something they say is just so obvious, something that's just so truthful, you know, that your feelings are irrelevant. <laughs> that all that matters is whether you have an emotional uh, reaction to something. Understanding it and respecting it. No, that's silly talk. Have an emotion over it and we'll respect your emotion, uh, but only in the context as long as we agree with it. <laughs> yeah, so if it's an agreeable emotional reaction, we'll agree with it. And that's logical. Let's not describe things for what they are, or as they are. Let's describe them based on how we feel. I mean, again, we're just back to the, you know, porridge. <laughs> yeah, it's just oatmeal, fucker. Oh, he did another video where he's just doing all this metaphor shit, like somehow with all this verbal crap, as if he can undo the truth by just attempting to say that somehow gladiator war isn't descriptive. Yeah, no, it doesn't uh, bring up a, uh, a perfect representation of the biological mechanism uh, of its typical conditions, the typical creation moment and creation existence uh, as a living thing. Yeah, it does. And then consumption, reproduction, cannibalism, addiction. These aren't metaphorical terms. They're explicit descriptive terms. And the only one you could argue about is cannibalism, but frankly, I've changed it to parasitism, so who cares? And I still defend the use of cannibalism for stealing like-on-like -like parts. Stealing somebody else's welfare for your own is a cannibalism. Anyway, but oh, whatever. I mean, this is the, the desperate lengths they go to, and yet they say, we have the respectable position. We are on the intellectual high ground, and this is the semantics they resort to. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. It looks all desperate to me. Desperately desperate. Um, so, let's see. If we go through it again. So you have a biological mechanism. It creates sensation as an event. It does happen. That's what a consciousness does. It has a feeling. The feeling has a quality. He says it has a quantity. So that's an interesting argument. So it has a quantity of an undisclosed value scale. So on a value scale with no numbers, it's somewhere on a value scale with no numbers. That's right, he, he was, from his argument, uh, 
<laughs> nail in the eye. It's just a really lousy good time. So it's a positive. It's just a sucky positive. Yeah. That's, that's the way he thinks it. He has no zero. He accounts for no negatives. And yet he says it's a quantitative value scale. I don't think so. I think you're already in big trouble if you say you have a quantitative value scale and you put nail in the eye as being possibly positive. Yeah, there's a real problem. Your scale is broken. Very, very broken. Irrelevant, meaningless, fucktarded, stupid, useless. Just dropped a cigarette ash. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good time to do that. Everything's very dry here. Good news, no wind. But now I have to waste a couple of minutes. All right, well, that gives me a chance to sit down. So, you know, in hostile days, perception, this fire would only affect the theys and the thems, so I shouldn't give a, a care. There's no ethical or moral responsibility for me to take some caution to make sure this doesn't affect somebody in a negative way. Uh, you know, that something bad doesn't happen. Um, because they're irrelevant. Now, unless I have some emotion. Well, I don't really have any positive emotions for rich fuckers. So, uh, that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think it's only because I logically know it would be a waste. It would just be waste, and waste is bad. Okay? Uh, the waste of stress and distress and uh, uh, dysfunction and negative sensations that would go with the destruction of somebody's welfare. They are beautiful little flowers. Well, cute little flowers are beautiful. Uh, but anyway. Cute, kind of fuckable. Anyway, um, so where was I? Yeah, so, so this whole, uh, again, they're just saying that the two them thing is just an instrument used to take something out of reality and place it in some confined container that isn't in a reality, that now is just a fake place that you can just hide the negative. So instead of having to deal with the negative as something that really exists, instead of having to deal with the fact that my welfare logically cannot possibly okay, be more, um, cannot possibly by any rational reason, for any, anything I could largely uh, logically articulate, cannot possibly be more important. It just can't. The sensations are the sensations. Um, there's no way I can make my sensations logically more important than somebody else's sensations. And so if, a, if, if there's an economy to be had, if I endure one nail in the eye, and if we do it the other way, two individuals endure nail in the eye, logically, there's really no way out of the obligation, rationally, to take the nail in the eye. Now, certainly, as a monkey, as a selfish fuck, I'm going to protest. I'll say, I don't want to. <laughs> okay, it's not my problem. But I guess I would have to back that up with something like, look, I think their existence is shit. I have no obligation to protect their existence because they're the ones defending the system. So I guess there would have to be nails in the eyes of two anti-natalists or something for there to be an equity. Clearly, the people who, who caused the problem, who spread the disease, um, I have no obligation to cure them of the disease. I have no obligation to protect them from the disease by getting disease myself because I'm a disease stopper. So I could make a reason why they deserve it, they earn it, and therefore they should get it. But logically, it still comes down to the basic math, which is 
two in one. And you just can't get around it. It's, it's just bad to have twice as much bad. It's just bad. Bad reasoning, bad action. If an action results in twice as much bad stuff happening, then the action is bad. It can't be a good action. It's not possible. I mean, if the choice of, of just one was there, of having half as much of the bad. Okay, I think I've done my job here. I'll light another cigarette to celebrate. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's... <clears throat> but that's, like I said, I think that's bottom line. That's what this whole thing is about is they know the implications of a child being a child is that they just can't be assholes. They can't be selfish. And they can't be a lot of things they want to be. <clears throat> and they have to take responsibility for the world that exists. And the fact that they've done nothing to fix it. And, uh, you know, to cure the disease. And it's that responsibility that's got them running from the truth. And it is running, in my opinion. I mean, clearly, in my opinion, there's really no other way you could mess up something so obvious. Pain bad when it happens to me. Pain bad when it happens to them. Pain bad. It's the pain that matters. It's the suffering that matters not who it's happening to, and not how they react to it. Whether they run away or not is totally irrelevant. Uh, what causes it, totally irrelevant in the intrinsic sense, has nothing to do with fixing the problem. <laughs> okay, the reality of it being a problem isn't changed because the cause is stupid. If the earthquake is caused in California because, you know, somebody swats a cockroach, you know, right on top of the earthquake fault or something, it might be a stupid reason for an earthquake, but it doesn't change the problem of earthquake. You know, well, I guess I really have to just write up a, a simple little IQ test with simple yes or no answers and just do a statistical survey and find out really what percentage of the lunatics on Earth actually think <laughs> their consciousness is more substantive than other people's and actually believe that. Not feel it, but believe it. Think it. And uh, how many people would argue that in absolute factual terms there is no difference, value difference, between a universe full of sentient organisms with nail in the eye causing normal nail in the eye sensations and a universe covered in people eating cupcakes having normal cupcake sensations. That there is no big reason, if any reason, to get it out of your chair, uh, to change it from one to the other. <laughs> yeah, so if it's all nail in the eye, no rational reason to get up and change it. I mean, really, do people think that? They actually believe that's a possible truth, that it's quite possibly true that through some convoluted magic of God, okay, uh, we have been preposterously fooled into thinking torture was a bad thing. And all this time, we could have been having all kinds of creative fun torturing things uh, because we had this idiotic notion that torture was a negative experience. A bad thing. I just can't, you just can't make any sense out of it. Yeah, room. 
<laughs> yeah, I, 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 oh God, I've been trying to shit that for days. <sighs> oh, that feels so much better. I don't know why this thing doesn't stay closed. <sighs> it's irritating. I guess it's a zipper. Some sort of zipper. Let's try putting it in sideways. Yeah. At least does that. Put something that's a little too long. And eventually, zippers just open and it falls out. Very irritating. Uh, where was I? <laughs> Sorry, very irritating. Yeah, I am irritated. Grotesquely and profoundly. Very revolting. Very upsetting. Very disturbing. Very sickening. To contemplate the depths of this and stupid motherfuckery. To them. It's valuable to them. Having smallpox is a value negative experience to them. To them just makes it, right? <laughs> yeah, it just that just adds so much. Having smallpox to them. Oh yeah, the two of them is so much more important than the smallpox thing. Smallpox, eh, who cares? To them, wow. Now that's the interesting fact. Yes, sir. <laughs> Not to me. I guess that would be it, right? That would be even cooler. Yeah. Smallpox is being experienced <laughs> as a horrible, agonizing, uh, debilitating, torturous uh, thing. Sickness. Uh, not to me. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, that's the important fact. Ooh, yeah, it wasn't me. I guess that's all this is about for these people. They just want to be selfish cunts, and they've years in convoluted mishmash to make an excuse for it. And there's nothing else happening. There's nothing else to see here. Again, I can't. <laughs> they keep negating the argument from I personally experienced it, but I mean it's a pretty powerful argument. I personally been there. And you're telling me you were completely fooled. You weren't really there because there's no there. There is no place called misery. There is no place called torment or suffering. <laughs> Those are all wrongly labeled configurations. They're just brain configurations like paintbrush. Paintbrush, torture. Just a brain configuration. Horrible chronic pain, pink balloon. Same thing, just a brain configuration. <sighs> You're being totally duped into thinking you had a feeling when all you had was an action. You didn't have a feeling. No, feelings had nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah, like deserve. Feelings have nothing to do with it. And they mock me for pausing and saying, what? <laughs> yeah, right. Like there's any other reaction to have. You compare torture to a paintbrush. Put it in the same category as. It's just a brain configuration. And I'm supposed to say, good move. Trying to steal fish here. <laughs> yeah, can't wait till retirement. <laughs> You're getting old is cool. <laughs> I mean, these people are so full of shit. 
Defending a world of such crap. You tell him, fucker. Fuck him, yeah. Fuck, 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 fuck. I hear you. Fuck, 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 fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. Okay. Everywhere. Shit, 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 shit. Shitties. Use the bathroom. Pooper scooper. Clean up after yourselves. Just dumb animals. Like the people on YouTube. Just dumb animals. But really, I think I, if I talk for five or six hours with one of those geese, I might be able to get them to say, Yes, suffering sucks in the universe. Not just to me. Yeah, I get that. Fuck you, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Ah, the dog is barking. That means it sees me through all that shit. It's actually seeing me. <laughs> yeah. Friendly dog. It's just kind of funny. It knows my scent. <laughs> yeah, things can smell me from miles away. It's pretty cool. I like that. <sighs> yeah, that's will to power. Anyway, I think I'm supposed to stop soon. I just thought it might come up with some other... What? What are you saying? <laughs> yeah, what, <laughs> what? Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, it's quantitatively different, but on a scale that has no numbers. Don't you get it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just quantitatively different, but the quantities don't mean anything. The quantities have no meaning whatsoever. So it's a scale of meaninglessness. From meaningless to meaninglesser. <laughs> Fuck. Denialists. Denialist, denialist. Yeah. Worse than that. Uh, they're worse than AIDS. I mean, I'm sorry to say it, but I mean, <laughs> frankly, I mean, it just seems to me that in the long run, it's a more insidious disease, this denialism, than just about anything that could infect a human. Total brain killer. Your brain is absolutely useless if it can't recognize the most important thing in the universe. The welfare of the feeling organism. All you can say is pitiful. Pitiful, pitiful, pitiful. Anyway. I think that's enough. I'm tired of it. I haven't even gone. Ugh. Fuck. Until next time. This dog's gonna come attack me. I don't know if you can see this, but <laughs> it's a big old sucker fish eating the sunfish eggs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nature doing its thing. Get to them before they even hatch. Yeah. It's one of the big monster trout is still in here. I don't know if you'll see him here or not. He pops in down here now and then, but no, not there. Very big. Look how swampy it is out there. Oof. There's some big, big, big fish in here. Anyway. Um, ooh, there it goes. Zoom, zoom, zoom. I don't know whether you can see that zooming over there. Big trout. Oh, I'm gonna shut the camera. <laughs> anyway, um, so, yeah. Lovely day, really. Oh, I thought I would stop and uh, commune with the nature and such. So, I guess I'll be back later, maybe, possibly. 
Maybe. <clears throat> I don't know. I feel like it. A little memorial bench to uh, a kid that died in a fire. Ugh! Snapping turtle. Goddamn big fucker. Jeez, he scared me. Big snapping turtle. Big, 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 big. That's a 30 pounder at least. 35 maybe. Let's see if he pops his head up. Come on, pop your head up. Well, you can see the bubbles. That's him, the bubbles. Damn, big. Yes, sir. Very big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I would have liked to get a better view, but you, know, you get what you get. It's free. Free na nature show. Free nature shows don't have very good nature in them. Yeah. Well, the pond's quite active this year compared to last year. Lots of little bits running about. Oh, that's a big turtle. Anyway, I used to catch them in my youth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just fun adventuring, you know. Can you catch the snapping turtle without getting alive? Oh, there's a big dead trap there. Too bad. I guess got caught. So we put him back. It didn't work out too well. But anyway, we're all going down. Doomed. Look at that nice red slime there. Lovely red slime. Really can't get better than that, green slime wise. It's premium green slime. Now, let's see what else. <laughs> I'm just wasting time here. So I really don't want to philosophize too tired for it. Yeah, it's just really disappointing that people are just so obnoxious to reality, so rude to it. You know, to glibly minimize the existence of something as real as torture. Just amazing. Can't say it's bad. Just can't figure it out. So stupid, as they say. So these little cherry blossoms have blossomed. Oh, too lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Lovely, lovely. That's lovely, 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 lovely. I don't see the point of this whole flowering tree that doesn't create any fruit, though. I mean, it'd be better to have free food than to have free flowers. Yeah, there's another ought statement. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to have flowers, you ought to have fruit. Really. Ah, so this is going to go down this hill without getting killed. Ooh, an interesting hole. Sometimes when turtles hatch, they do this. But sometimes it's just some rat hole or something. You yeah, don't see any eggs. I don't see any egg leavings. No little dried up shells in or anything. No dried up fish. Ah, it's hot out here. Yeah, anybody got a uh, a suntan lotion or something? Oh, jeez. I'm making fun of the dead. <sighs> that's not good. Whoa, bass. That's a bass right there. Can you see the bass? That's Mr. Bass in there. Can you see Mr. Bass? That's a big fucker, too. He's like a four-pounder. Well, three pounder. But anyway, big. Not bad for a little pond. Whoa, kind of wobbly. Can't get too close to the edge. Let's see if the turtle's on the log. Oh, so I waited all this time because I wanted to see if the turtle was on the log. And apparently he's not. Yeah, they hang out by the island, obviously. The turtles are smart. 
Uh, but there's sometimes a turtle on that log there. Sometimes. On a good day. There's a big bass, boy. I mean, that is a big bass. So we got little bass and big bass. Yeah, that's a nice war. There's one of them trout. He's all cut up. Got a fin problem. There's another bass there. Man, there's some big fucking fish in here. Huh. I wish I was still the fisherman kind. Yeah, that's a trout there. Got a bad fin though. Really doesn't look too healthy. Yeah, you don't look too good. No, you don't. Kill me! Kill me! Somebody kill me! Yeah, that's going too well. Anyway, I, you know, sorry. <laughs> this is not a proper video, but... I just can't tell you how... Oh, you know, dead fish there. Ooh, there's a dead fish. Ooh, God, there's a lot of dead... Oh, what a waste of a trout there. Mm, damn. Good eating fish if you're a fish eater. There's a dead one on the dam, too. Man, that's some waste there, people. If you're gonna catch the damn things, eat the damn things. Jeez. Base, base, base. Little crawdad claw there. Probably got snickered by a bass there. Yeah, too bad about the dead fence there. Yeah. Alright, we'll do one more look over here and that'll be it. So. They paved this road, it's kind of spooky because you don't hear the cars as much. <laughs> so you really got to look what you're doing. You get killed. Which isn't all bad, I suppose. All right, well, I don't see anything terribly fascinating. Oh, is that another snapping turtle? Yeah, I think it's just a blob of shit. Okay, blob of shit. Yeah, I think we're done for the day. All right, till next time and such. It's a fourth and one car coming. Will it get me? We should have put our sidewalk in here. <laughs> yeah. It really does suck not to have a sidewalk. Alright, anyway, until next time. Ah, yes. Bring the broadcast day to a close. With the birds and the blossoms. Ah, really quite nice. Anyway, yeah, the cat's sitting in my chair, so... It's not, back, but not bad back here, though. Before the mosquitoes get here, it's quite nice, actually. It's been very dry summer, spring. Spring, yeah. And so uh, that's good, because maybe less mosquitoes, so excellent. Or it might be a wet summer, you know, who knows. But anyway, it's been very nice not to have rain. Because I haven't had to deal with pumps and crap and shit. So anyway. So... Yeah, it's, uh, I wish there was just better philosophy to work on than having to go to step A. You know, we can't even get off the ground, so to speak, in terms of establishing that um, the nature of the human dilemma is unpleasant sensations. And once those are made irrelevant, well, then you could say, okay, everything's just fine. But you're not going to do that in this biosphere that's feeding you. You might be able to do that in some spaceship somewhere where you can live in isolation and uh, feed off of uh, some, some kind of machinery that provides you the necessary um, comforts. Um, but it's still just psychology. You're just a contrived bug. You know, you, you're a bug that does something different. There's bugs that do some wacky shit, you know. 
I mean, I'm sure if I really thought about it, I could come up with some insects that have really strange behaviors that seem quite useless and purposeless, but, you know, serve a purpose in some stupid and idiotic way. And that's sort of what simians are in general. Monkeys were not, you know, they're, they're, they're not exactly the most successful organism on Earth. Um, it's kind of a narrow niche that we came from, you know, population-wise. And, uh, yeah, so we have a song and a dance, um, you know, contrived desires, um, very basic in some sense, just keep me warm, like I said, right, right now I'm quite comfortable, keep me warm enough, keep the bugs off of me, um, you know, give me at least a, a good fantasy to, to live by, and, um, yeah, this is doable, it's, it's livable, um, in terms of there's not a great deal of stress, but we know that that's not how life comes. It comes in these patches. It's very, it's a very ugly patchwork, um, very inconsistent, and very unfairly distributed, and all that stuff. And you're not, you know, another thing that's going to be nearly impossible to fix. So, well, I'd say impossible. Um, no point in the nearly part. But yeah, we can't do this. We can't have a conversation about even human psychology without establishing the fact that that's what it is, psychology. And that there's a difference between what we can identify to be the truth and what we personally, what our personal interest is and what our personal desires are. Um, I've talked about cigarettes before. I'm addicted to cigarettes, but I would have a death penalty, an actual death penalty for anyone giving cigarettes to a minor. That's how much I know cigarettes are bad. Okay, but they don't serve a functional purpose. So, even though it's not in my interest to worry about or be concerned about other people who aren't addicted, I, I don't lose anything by being honest. And the truth is, it's a bad thing and it should be discouraged. Just a fact. You can do that. You don't have to have a personal interest. And I guess that's what all these people think that life is, is your personal interest. And there's so many things you can do based on no personal interest that don't require any effort. Like I said, it doesn't take any effort for me to say cigarettes are bad, okay? It's a stupid, idiotic addiction. Don't think because I'm smoking and I'm terribly cool um, that I'm cool because I smoke. Even if it's true, it's not worth it. I mean, you know, it's, it's, I can go through the million things, all the money wasted. Um, clearly, for some people, there's health you know, tragedy, um, just, there's no point, it's just not a good thing to do, so it is an addiction, so that's it, so, you know, people have their delusionary, unicorn riding, happy story, fable bullshit about what life is, and what they're going to accomplish in their life, and how it's all going to end in some great climax of completion, but for most people, it doesn't work out that way. For me, I've been sort of lucky is that I've got two philosophical, well, two uh, scientific, two reasonable initiatives. I'm moderately accessible at this anti-natalism stuff, you know, arguing the cruel truth about existence. Um, and that's a little bit gratifying. And then this physics thing might be a real, pff, whoops, accidentally just stepped into, hey, look at that. I was worth it after all. But that's you just get lucky to be worth it. The, the, my life could, it could still go that way, but I'm just saying it doesn't seem like it can possibly go where I'm just totally obscure and, and useless in the sense that I just think I got nailed with this physics thing. But regardless, um, yeah, you, you live your life and you, you hope to do something, you hope to, to get somewhere, and all you get is older, and you still got the same ambitions and the same slop you're f f rowing through um, you know it uh, you know I've described it before as a dungeon where you just keep trying to climb out and you don't really get up and out you just keep going sideways and so the dungeon changes there's a window here and there there's some other thing to climb on there's some other stuff where you get a different perspective throughout your life but you're still in the dungeon you're not going to escape the doom of it all the futility of it all, where 
either your body's going to give out or your ambition's going to give out. And if they don't give out at exactly the same time, that's going to be a problem. You know, you're going to you're going to have a problem because you're going to be you're going to be fretting over dying or you're going to be living um, just to drudge. Well, anyway, yeah, I didn't mean to get quite that philosophical, but I'm just trying to point out that you can't really have a philosophical conversation if you don't really understand what the values are. And the values aren't our ambitions or our desires or our addictions. The silly things we're addicted to and attached to, those aren't the valuable things. The valuable things are our feelings, the addiction, the needs, the, um, the, the comfort, the experience of completion, the um, gratification of fighting a good fight and having a good day. It's like today, you know, the work I did today all turned out pretty good, and that's gratifying. You know, you have a day where nothing, it doesn't go wrong and nothing breaks and everything seems to work and you know and the pool is beautiful crystal clear you know it's worked out just great um so you know i had a good couple of days but it, they were uncomfortable days but yeah you get the comfort of hey it worked out though everything went pretty well um but that's all we kind of live for is this little bit of this little bit of food you know to keep us walking the trail you know, it gives us some crumbs now and then to just keep us in the game. One potato chip at a time. So there's a statement, you know, life is one potato chip at a time. The Nietzscheism there. Um, that's pretty much it, and that's not good enough. And for the people who think it is good enough, I just think they're doing that because they're just afraid to admit it's not. They're just afraid to. They've had it hammered into their psychology that this is somehow more. Is there's just over the rainbow, the Emerald City, you know, and they have multicolored horses and stuff, and it's, they sing songs, and it's just all fucking spectacular. Oh, these cigarettes keep <laughs> keep falling apart before I finish smoking them, which is inconvenient. It's, you know, it's kind of a fire hazard. Now I have to stop the woods. Yeah, anyway. Um, so I think that's enough. You don't need to hear all that. No, oh, but it's lovely. Yeah, I really do. These little bushes. See, I cleared this stuff out last year, so these little bushes did much better. But I really like those. They're very interesting. You know, they're very sparse, and they just get those little lines of, of flowers. Well, it is quite nice. <sighs> the crab apple, this one's been around forever. It's had trees fall on it and it keeps living. <sighs> I have a couple of real apple trees I hope to get an apple or two out of, but we'll see what happens. <sighs> it's flowers, but they just don't go to fruiting. Anyway, so I think that's enough. So, till the next time, such. Another just wonderful day here. It's beautiful, 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 fantastic, wonderful. So, until next time.